So friends, Republican Representative Jim Jordan, who criminally defied a congressional subpoena, has been issuing congressional subpoenas, demanding that witnesses come before the House Judiciary Committee to testify. Well, you know, I have a suggestion as to what witnesses might want to include in their opening remarks when they are subpoenaed by Jim Jordan to testify. Let's talk about that, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, former New York prosecutor, who also happens to be a former federal prosecutor, Mark Pomerantz, will be testifying to Jim Jordan's committee to aid and abet Donald Trump. They call it the House Judiciary Committee, but Jim Jordan's not fooling anyone. Here is the recent reporting on Pomerantz's upcoming appearance before Congress. Headline, ex-prosecutor set to testify before GOP-led House Judiciary Committee in May. And that article begins, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and the Republican-led House Judiciary Committee have settled a court dispute where the prosecutor's office tried to block congressional testimony from former prosecutor Mark Pomerantz, according to a new court filing. House Judiciary Chair Jim Jordan subpoenaed Pomerantz earlier this month as part of his effort to investigate Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's indictment of former President Donald Trump. Pomerantz investigated Trump and his business empire before he resigned from the District Attorney's Office last year, and Republicans argue that his public comments suggest that the charges brought against Trump are politically motivated. In his resignation letter, Pomerantz said Trump was guilty of numerous felony violations related to his annual financial statements. Pomerantz is set to testify on May 12th before the panel, and a lawyer from the district attorney's office will be able to sit in on the deposition, the two sides acknowledged in statements. Quote, Pomerantz's deposition will go forward on May 12th, and we look forward to his appearance, Russell Dye, a spokesperson for Chairman Jim Jordan, said in a statement. You know, friends, I hope Mark Pomerantz takes off the gloves during his testimony and speaks truth to power, or in Jim Jordan's case, speaks truth to abuse of power. You know, if I were Pomerantz, called as a witness, subpoenaed as a witness by Jim Jordan, my opening remarks would probably go something like this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Representative Jim Jordan, I'd like to start my opening remarks today by pointing out the stone-cold hypocrisy and irony of you, Mr. Chairman, who criminally defied a congressional subpoena, criminally violated a congressional subpoena, blew off a congressional subpoena in your determination not to testify about the crimes of Donald Trump, you, Mr. Chairman, issuing me the exact kind of subpoena that you criminally violated. Notwithstanding the fact that you have absolutely no moral authority to issue me or anybody a congressional subpoena when you yourself chose to commit the crime of contempt of Congress, violate a congressional subpoena rather than comply with it, I'm here, I've complied, because I actually honor and respect the rule of law unlike you. So I'm here prepared to testify today, Mr. Chairman, and I am ready to answer any and all questions about why, when I investigated the crimes of Donald Trump, when I was with the New York District Attorney's Office, why I concluded that we amassed enough evidence not only to indict Donald Trump, 
but to prove beyond a reasonable doubt he convicted multiple felonies in violation of the laws of New York State. Mr. Chairman, I'm ready to take your questions. Friends, we have to take the gloves off. We have insurrectionists sitting in Congress, sitting members of Congress who sought pardons for the crimes they knew they committed on and around January 6th. We have a chairman of the House Judiciary Committee who committed the crime of contempt of Congress rather than incriminate Donald Trump. We have Donald Trump on the campaign trail pledging to violate the laws of the United States and the Constitution if reelected. We have a Supreme Court justice whose rulings have been bought and paid for by a billionaire Republican donor. And now we have a chief justice who has just in substance declared that the Supreme Court is an ethics free zone. We have got to take the gloves off before it's too late. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.